So there are two hunters and they're out hunting and one of them has a heart attack, falls to the ground and his buddy immediately calls 911 and says, my buddy just uh, passed out, I think he had a heart attack, I think he's dead. And the 911 operator said, well, let's make sure he's dead. And a couple of seconds later, she hears a gunshot and he says, okay, now what? <laughs> Last week, I began a seven week homily series called On Fire, Stories of the Early Church. And I had in the homily takeaway, I told the servers before mass, I said, I want you to write down your takeaways from my homily in that section. And one of the servers wrote this. I think he did a great job of, he or she, did a great job of capturing the essential points of week one. The early church grew because of their great love for one another. Jesus shared his time with two of the disciples that had left. Pouring into means sacrificing your time for someone not necessarily because you have to, but because you want to. And then it ended with two questions, can this be us and can this be you? And that's a pretty good summary of what week one was all about. And this week I wanna delve a little bit deeper into the life of the early church and how they lived out their life. Our gospel reading today on this Good Shepherd Sunday says that Jesus is the good shepherd and that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The early church, I think, would say of themselves that they lived abundant lives. And today we'll look at four ways in which they did so. Now, if you follow along with the scripture readings as the lector is reading them on your phone or uh, on a, in a missal, you might have noticed that I added a verse to that first reading. Uh, I added the verse that actually will start next week's first reading uh, because we're reading from Acts of the Apostles right now and we're reading a continuation this week and next. St. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, also wrote Acts of the Apostles. And in Acts, he tells us about the beginnings of the early church. And the line that I added is this. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. I want to break down that one line because once again, if we are to be the community that God calls JP2 Parish to be, then I think we need to take on at least some of the characteristics of the early church. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. Let's start with that word devoted. What does that word mean? What does it mean to, vote, to be devoted to someone or something? I believe first and foremost, it means giving yourself completely to that to which you are devoted. This is the scene in the movie City Slickers where Curly says, the secret of life is one thing and one thing only. And the City Slickers look at him hanging on his every word and they say, what is it? What is that one thing? To which Curly replies, that's what you have to find out. Well, for the early church, it was quite clear that one thing was Jesus. They had given their lives completely for the one who was raised from the dead. They were devoted to that one who rose on Easter Sunday. And it was logical that they did. If someone can predict his resurrection and then do it, then that's someone who is worthy of our trust. They saw it happen, and because of that, they were devoted to him. And because they were devoted to him, they were also devoted to a certain way of living. The early Christians were devoted, first of all, to the teaching of the apostles. Early on, in the first 30 years after the ascension of Jesus, it was almost all oral tradition. So-and-so heard this, they saw Jesus firsthand. So-and-so witnessed the resurrection. They would say things perhaps like, hey, listen to this. The apostle John, he was one of the 12, he said this. Or, St. Matthew said this. They didn't yet have a whole Bible together, and that would not come for about another 40 to 60 years. But they would talk about what they had seen and what they had heard with their own eyes. Hey, listen to this. This is what St. Peter said, and he was one of Jesus' closest friends. But for us, devoting ourselves to the teaching of the apostles means devoting ourselves to the scriptures. Where do you make time to read the Bible? 
or even to watch shows that tell us of the life of Jesus. How do the scriptures help you to know Jesus better? How well do you devote yourself to the teachings of the apostles? The second thing they did was devote themselves to communal life. In other words, they spent time together. They spent time with each other. For them, it was a way of supporting each other in this newfound faith that they had. They were excited to get together and talk about the impact Jesus had on their lives. Do you surround yourself with other Christian people, with other people in our parish? When I was growing up, my parents would say, you're judged by the company you keep. Hang out with good people and you'll be a good person. Hang out with bad people and they'll drag you down to their level. There is a story about a couple out walking their dog, Charlie, in the mountains. A squirrel had passed by and Charlie broke free, pulling his leash behind him. Just that quickly, the couple realized that he was gone. They stopped, they asked some hikers if they had seen Charlie, but no luck. They stopped at the ranger station to see if anyone had found Charlie, but they hadn't. They called their Bible study group back home and asked them to pray that they, found Char that they would find Charlie. They called a local radio station and asked them to announce that their dog was missing. Through the course of the day, the community mobilized. A biker rode through the hills calling Charlie's name. Rangers drove up and down the mountain roads looking for the dog. Members of the Bible study actually drove to where they were to help search. As the sun was setting, it looked like the dog might never be found. Then they got a call. Some campers had heard about Charlie and found him hiding underneath a car that was parked exactly where they had parked their car earlier that morning. The couple described this as the most profound experience of community they had ever had. Now here's the question for us. How committed are we to Christian community? Acts of the Apostles tells us that this is how the early church operated. They devoted themselves to communal living. So they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, they devoted themselves to communal living, and they devoted themselves to the breaking of the bread. Breaking bread together in the homes was a hallmark of the early church. They took seriously Jesus' words, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in memory of me. In 1955, 75% of Catholics attended Mass every week. In 2015, 60 years later, it was down to 45%. And now that's before COVID. After COVID, it's down right now to 39%. Sister Mary Grace was an Irish nun who ran an orphanage after the Second World War. Joe was a young nine-year-old boy who entered the orphanage after both his parents were killed in the bombing in London. Joe was very small and thin. Despite the best attempts of Sister Mary Grace to fatten him up, nothing seemed to work. As much as he would eat, Joe simply would not put on weight. And so he continued to look like he was close to starvation. One day, the, doc, uh, the government sent a doctor to examine all the children in the orphanage. Sister Mary Grace was coming down the hall as Joe left the examination room. In a casual way, she asked him, Joe, what did the doctor have to say? The boy answered, well, he told me to undress, and then he said, my, what a miserable little specimen you are. The nun was shocked by the doctor's remarks, but before she could say anything, Joe continued, but sister, I don't think the doctor knew that yesterday I made my first Holy Communion. This young boy, for all of his trouble and pain, knew that he was not a miserable specimen because he had received Jesus, the bread of life. He had the very presence of Christ within him, and so he knew that because of that, he was a person of dignity and value. The early church knew the value of the Eucharist. It was for them a priority. Is it a priority for us? So they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the communal living, to the breaking of the bread, and finally they devoted themselves to the prayers. Because of their Jewish background, the early church would have understood the importance of a rhythm of prayer. The Jewish people pray three times each day, in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. 
and they were committed to that. And the early church continued that commitment. So what is your rhythm of prayer? Do you have a rhythm of prayer? Jesus had a rhythm of prayer. Over 25 times in the Bible, we hear that Jesus went off to pray. Another 10 times, we hear Jesus actually praying. Prayer was important to Jesus, and it was important to the early church. Is prayer important to you? So they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. Now here's the question. Is it enough to only do some of that? Is it enough to come to Mass and to pray if we're not also involved in the community and dedicated to reading the scriptures? Is it enough to read the scriptures and be involved in the community and come to Mass but never really pray? I guess the answer comes down to this. Do you want people to look at you and say, that person lives out their faith in an authentic way? Do we want people to look at us collectively as a parish and say, these are, these are a people, this is a church that lives authentically their Christian faith? People who are looking for a church are looking for churches that they see as authentic. And here's the catch. If you want us to be that type of church, you have to be that type of Christian. The early church gives us a model for authenticity in that they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers.